tens of thousands of gallons of water. That's what it takes to put out an electric vehicle fire. There's a lot of companies out there trying to solve this problem, trying to make it easier for firefighters to extinguish an electric vehicle. Let's look at some of those devices. To understand the difficulty in extinguishing electric vehicle fire, you have to understand the basics on construction. And you can see my two-part series by clicking the link in the description below. But the biggest issue, lithium ion battery cells are located in a watertight fireproof box under the vehicle. It makes it very difficult to access. The other issue is lithium ion batteries don't require oxygen to burn. It's an exothermic chemical reaction. It gives off a tremendous amount of heat and all that heat, all that fire, all those flammable gases inside this watertight fireproof box. So let's look at some of the different devices that companies have created to help firefighters extinguish lithium ion batteries. Let me start off with one of the most basic tools that we have as firefighters, a fire extinguisher. A lot of people ask, can we use class D fire extinguishers to extinguish a lithium ion battery fire? The answer is no. The problem is it's a lithium ion battery. It's lithium ion chemistry inside of that cell, not lithium metal. There's a large difference there. Now there's firefighting foams. A lot of people seem to think I can use firefighting foams to extinguish lithium ion batteries. Now remember again, these batteries do not require oxygen to burn. Firefighting foams, they're meant to suffocate a fire. Now, I know there's a lot of people out there that say, hey, we've got these special foams, we've got these special chemicals, special water additives that may put out lithium ion battery fires. They've done some research into the area. However, again, we go back to waterproof, fireproof box. You can't get the material, that foam material, that foam and water inside the box to fight the fire. Another device out there is a pancake nozzle. This is a flat nozzle that can slide underneath the vehicle, spraying water up into the underside of that vehicle to try and cool that vehicle off. Unfortunately, you need lots and lots of water to try to extinguish these fires. And trying to extinguish the fire from the outside of the box isn't really an effective method. You can see in this video here, if this ladder truck isn't extinguishing this fire, a small little nozzle underneath a vehicle, that's not gonna do the trick either. Vehicle construction makes it very difficult to try any cooling from the underside of the vehicle. Every vehicle is designed a little bit differently. You've got layers upon layers of material in there. You've got air gaps, different insulative materials. So depending on the vehicle construction, it makes it very difficult. Think about a structure fire. You've got a half bath right in the middle of a house. It's on fire, just the bathroom's on fire, and you wanna to try to fight that fire from the outside of the house. Is it gonna work? Absolutely not. To fight a fire in a house, you've got to go inside the house. And to fight a fire inside the battery box, you have to get inside of that battery box to fight the fire. Unfortunately, that is not advised. And that leads me to the next device on the list, piercing nozzles. There's a number of different piercing nozzles out there that are designed to pierce into the battery box itself, allowing water to flow through the box or into the box, cooling the battery cells, stopping the thermal runaway event. This is a really bad idea. Look at every single emergency response guide out there for electric vehicles. Every single one of them say, do not pierce, puncture, or try to gain access to the inside of our battery box. So if we do use these type of devices to gain access to the inside of the battery box and somebody happens to get hurt, where does the liability fall? That is a major issue for fire departments if they're going against manufacturer's recommendations. On top of that, vehicle construction is another thing to worry about. A lot of these vehicles have cross car structural frame members in there. You try to pierce through one of those, it's probably not gonna work. Other designs have segmented battery boxes where each individual segment is its own container. If you pierce into the wrong section, the area that's not affected by fire, you're gonna cause a thermal runaway in that area, you're gonna cause damage, more damage in that area, and you're gonna have a bigger mess on your hands and not even affect the area that's on fire then you look at the Tesla Model Y, where the entire inside of that battery pack is full of foam. You try to pierce into that, there's nowhere for that water to go. It's gonna go straight in that hole and come right back out. Fire blankets also claim to be able to extinguish a lithium ion battery fire in an electric vehicle. But again, lithium ion batteries don't require oxygen to burn. But don't discount fire blankets completely. I believe fire blankets could be useful for exposure control. You've got a vehicle fire in a parking garage 
or a regular garage or near some type of exposure, using this blanket to cover up the vehicle to protect those exposures could be useful. Just be aware that when the lithium ion batteries, when they react, when they give off all that heat, all those gases, flammable gases are released. So you could have a buildup of flammable gases underneath that fire blanket, and it could cause some type of energetic event. Now, if there's any other devices out there that you've heard of or any other tactics that you'd like discussed on this channel, please feel free to comment below. Unfortunately, there's no great way to put out an electric vehicle fire as of today. All these methods have their issues. The best thing you could do for an electric vehicle is to let it burn. You look at the case studies out there, a lot of these fire departments putting 30, 40, 60,000 gallons of water on these electric vehicles, spending four, six, eight hours on scene, the end result is the same. The battery burns itself out. Everything inside that watertight, fireproof box, it burns. If you just allow the vehicle to burn naturally without intervention, you'll likely only be on scene for an hour, hour and a half, a quick mop up at the end, the fire will be out and you'll be able to go on your way. I definitely understand this is a controversial topic. There's a lot of people out there trying to sell different methods. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Have a great discussion on this topic and maybe I'll follow up with a future video.